tree for me now. Where'd it go? It's in the fork of the oh, right. dead tree. Yeah. Skinny little bright tree, and it just it just flipped down. There's two birds there now. They actually both look like they could be black and white warblers. Yeah, and that's where the yellow one. Trying to find the one. It's a mouse, yeah. right on the trunk of a tree, so it's acting a little bit like a nuthatch, not so much like a warbler. The black or the blue warbler is new for the nest. both of them maybe in the same frame they have a song that's described as buzz buzz btg for black throated green but that little spitting call is distinctive and then lower down just off the end of this log is where the black throated blue so there's those are foraging lower and then there's a yellow rump warbler making a slightly different noise and it's higher up in the trees a little bit out of range. It's up there where the leaves are. Okay, and that's a chickadee that we're looking at up here on the left. When you come on a little pocket of activity, it's a good idea to just stop and look around and wait for things to show themselves to you. yellow rumped warbler coming closer and lower. It's right up against the, this trunk up here. Just moving around to the right a little bit. And I see two black throated greens and a black and white warbler in the same binocular view. song. It's not the Buzz Buzz BTG that I described. This is an alternate song. Buzz Buzz BTG, sort of. And that G G G G, that's the Black Throated Blue Warbler song. Without binoculars or a long camera lens, it can be difficult to see birds well. We hear a lot more birds than we see, which is a good reason to study bird songs. Back in this brush pile, we can hear the bubbling song of a house wren.
a little brown bird, well hidden in all these tangles. Very difficult to see sometimes. But very easy to identify and detect by its song. One of the most wonderful and interesting things about birds is their voices. We can use their voices to help identify them, but the birds themselves use their voices to establish territories and to attract mates. Scientists also study their voices for a variety of reasons. One good resource for uh, studying bird songs and for just uh, being able to um, enjoy them is a website called Xenocanto, xenocanto.org is uh, a site where hundreds of uh, scientists and recordists, including myself, have contributed recordings for uh, over 9,000 of the world's 10,000 bird species. There are a variety of ways that bird songs can be enjoyed by everyone, and this includes even hearing impaired and visually impaired people. Bird songs can be heard quite well if you are uh, able to hear birds, and it is quite enjoyable. But I will show you in this um, demonstration of how Zeno Canto works uh, that you can actually see bird songs even if you can't hear them. And sometimes, with scientists uh, studying them, you can learn a lot more by seeing the song than you can by hearing it. So this is the Zeno Canto website. And you can search for any bird song that you want. Let's look for black capped chickadee, a bird that's probably familiar to a lot of us. And you can see all those dots on the map here show locations where recordings have been made of black capped chickadee. And if you scroll down, you can select through the many, many pages of black capped chickadee recordings. You can also zoom in on the map and select a recording. Let's pick one of these. This black capped chickadee recording, if we select it, has the data about when and where it was uh, taken in uh, Norville Township, Jackson County, Michigan. And this is the, the sound file. And what uh, you can see on the sound file is actually a graph. And as we play this song, you can hear the song, but you can also see the noises that it makes graphed. Now across the bottom here, this is the time that has elapsed. And on the left side, the higher up on the graph the lines are, that's the higher pitch the sound it makes. And thicker lines mean louder sounds, and thinner lines mean quieter sounds. Let's look at another one. This black cap chickadee recording was made in the same location, but it's a slightly different uh, vocalization. Most birds make a number of different vocalizations depending on what they're trying to do, what they're trying to communicate. You can see from the graph here that there are some very fine lines and some very, very uh, uh, dark lines here. And this will, uh, once you learn how to read these with your eyes, tell you what kinds of noise this is making. So the thin lines at the beginning are the sweet notes and the thicker lines at the end are the buzzy notes. So let's have a listen. This is the standard chickadee dee dee that uh, the species is named for. Now when scientists use these, uh, they're called sonograms, to study bird songs, they can look at how high pitched things are. They can tell if the song of a male is higher pitched or lower pitched than that of a female, if we know. They can also look at what we have displayed right here in front of us. We see here these thick notes, these D, D, D notes. There's three of them here. There's two of them here. 
and there's three of them here. They also look at how far apart some of these are spaced. We can see that the DDD notes are fairly close together, and that's pretty consistent. But there's also a space between the songs that's wider here and closer here. Scientists study why that might be. So there's a lot of different measurements that can be taken from these. Some other interesting things that we have learned from bird songs is that something that we uh, always thought was amazing and wonderful uh, can be easily seen on a graph. For example, the wood thrush is a very beautiful singer uh, that occurs in Michigan in the, wood, in the woodlands. So the wood thrush sings a very beautiful song in the woodlands throughout southeastern and southern Michigan. Uh, and it is uh, uh, a well-known singer. I'll play a little bit for you here. Now, what we have long known is that these are very complicated songs to sing, very beautiful, and it sounds like maybe more than one bird is singing at a time. And what we can see when we look at this graph is that there are notes that are lower and louder down here at the bottom, and then there's a buzzier one here right at the top. And you can see that these are being sung at exactly the same time. So how is it that a bird can sing two different songs at exactly the same time? Well, the way a bird's vocal cords are arranged is a little bit different from those of a human. Our vocal cords are placed in, in the throat above where our uh, breathing tube splits. One uh, side goes to each lung. So we have two lungs and our uh, breathing tube splits and the vocal cords are above that split. On birds, they have two sets of vocal cords and it's below the split. So they can sing a different song with their left lung and with their right lung at the same time. So they can harmonize with themselves. And the result is a very beautiful song. So Zeno Canto is a wonderful resource for learning bird songs. It won't help you identify them, but if you enter any bird species in the search, pick a species from your field guide or from your app, and uh, or from your list of uh, species that are most often seen or banded at the E.L. Johnson Nature Center, and just listen to some of their songs. Go through and find ones that are found around Michigan. Sometimes there are local dialects. Just like with humans, we have southern accents and Boston accents and even a Midwestern accent. Birds have different accents as well, depending on the parts of the country that they're found. And so that's why there are so many different recordings of all of these different species. There are 287 recordings of the wood thrush alone in the Xenocanto collection. When you go onto the Zeno Canto site, it'll have a recording of the day. Sometimes it's interesting to find out what uh, a bird from another country sounds like. Learning bird songs is a very important thing to do when you're out bird watching. Most of the birds you detect will be by sound with your ears, and very uh, much fewer will be uh, visually spotted with your eyes. So learning bird songs will help you become a much better bird watcher. Learning bird songs when you're younger is better. Your brain is more uh, adapted to learn vocalizations from the age of about 10 or 11 when I started um, up to when you're maybe 18 or 19 years old. After you become an adult, it becomes much more difficult to learn bird songs and you tend to have to relearn them every year after a winter of not hearing them. But if you learn them at a young age, you just learn them naturally.